Dual Review is brought to you by Nexus, digitalcomics.com. Today on Dual Review, we're going to be talking about the game Killer Instinct Gold for the N64. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Well, let's get to it. All right, today is July 15th, and we're going to be talking about Killer Instinct Gold for the N64. So it must have come out in the mid-1990s, and uh, it was released by Rare and Midway, and it was a port of the arcade game, uh, Killer Instinct 2. Which I played in Puerto Rico, actually. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, awesome fact. That was great. Fact away. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I helped. You threw me the hell off. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so anyway... Um, the story is kind of, you know, if it really needs to have the story, uh, the original characters from Killer Instinct get uh, sent back in a time rift warpy thing. Wait, there was an actual story to that game? Yeah, about 2,000 years, and they have to battle, what is his name, Goro? No, not Goro. Goro was Mortal Kombat. Right, right, right. Uh Gargos, Gargos. Oh, yeah. And uh, Gargos. along the way, they lost Cinder and uh, uh, Chief Thunder. And uh, everybody's favorite, Riptor. Those guys were gone for this one. Which one was Riptor? He's the, the dinosaur. The raptor, Riptor. Oh, yeah. So anyway, uh, and they added they added a few... Uh, Maya. Yeah, Maya and... Tusk and Kim Wu. So Tusk and Maya were, you know, they were like, you know, Mayan, whatever. 2,000 years ago, it makes sense. That's why they put them in there. Um, I'm not sure why Kim Wu got put in there, but... Who's Kim Wu? Regardless, she's the one little girl in there. I think she might have been mostly in the arcade. I don't know, maybe she didn't make it over to the port. Anyway, um, this game is one that Nick and I both remember fondly and we actually just replayed it a little while ago in 64 with the little controller <laughs> yeah. the controllers feel so weird now yeah uh, if, if you're like us and you've had that experience uh you know with the n64 if you grew up with that yeah go back and play this game it's pretty fun yeah um this game when it came out i can remember it being awesome period first i think it's still awesome <laughs> but uh what made it really special was you know, there's a lot of blood, just like Mortal Kombat, but it was definitely more fantasy. Well, I would just say that because it had Riptor, it had a dragon, it had a wolf, I mean, a werewolf character, it had, you know, Glacius. Spinal, uh, Glacius, right, and full Like alien and robots and all that right, stuff. Right. So instead of just, you know, demonic or another dimension like Mortal right, Kombat, right. it had even more of a fantasy edge to it. And um, it was very fast-paced because you have the combo system. Um C -c -c combo breaker. <laughs> if you if you play that, you know what that means. And, uh, it just had a kind of a different fluid kind of fighting style, and you could actually get through a match really quickly. Right. Um, if you strung combos together, there's humiliation combos, right. which literally take off your entire life. You know of the opponent. Oh, and that's some, that's something that I also like is the uh, the life bars. Yes. Typically, typically, um, when a new round starts, your life meter is reset, and you know you both have to start from the beginning. In Killer Instinct Gold, it doesn't do that. Where you left off um, in right. the you, match before is where you start. Right. You have a pool, a two full life bars, right. and when the match ends, your life stays right where it is. So if you just barely beat them, and you have just a tiny bit of life, well, guess what? You have just a tiny bit of life right. until his, you die. His, the first his meter, time. his meter is on the second part. It's full on the second part, while yours is just a tiny little right. bit. Right. So all he has to do is touch you, and you're dead too. So it's kind of one of that. Oh, I just split second beat him. So if I can right. keep this up, and and that's the way. Uh, you know, once you progress and you get towards some of the harder, you know, uh, difficult characters, that's literally the sliver. You beat him by slivers. Yeah. Uh, and it, it keeps you on edge, and I love very that. satisfying when you mm. do it. Yeah, you can't just own an opponent unless you do a good combo system, right? Um, and, and I, I think I think more games should do that. Yeah, I, I miss it. In fact, when I played back uh, Mortal Kombat two, or not Mortal Kombat two, I'm sorry, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom two, uh, I was actually confusing that life system with Killer Instinct. So when I started playing, I'm like, oh yeah, this is that one with. That cool, you know, system where you you right, don't regenerate right. and you do. I forgot that, and of course it makes sense because you know you jump out of frame and you right, re right, heal and you regenerate. Whatever, so yeah. it makes sense for that. But I really, really enjoy that. I wish, like you said, more games had done that. Why didn't they pick that up? Maybe we'll have to do that ourselves. 
Maybe. Stay tuned. But anyway, uh, <laughs> it has really good sound effects. It's it's very you know fast paced and like you get amped up playing it. And uh, you know the guy that is uh, whatever commentating, you know the combo breaker, and right, right, right. brutal combo, and whatever. He's very energetic. Yeah, and, very engaging too. And um, there's a lot of repeating sound bites, which I actually think works really well. I think it's really fun. No, no, I, I completely agree. The sound is amazing, and I love I. I love the cheesiness of it, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, I mean, it was always kind of cheesy. Yeah, it was but never it, really it, totally, taken it totally works. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's there's a lot of games that put a lot of emphasis on, well, you you know, in the in one fight, you might only hear the same sound right. bite a couple times, but this one ha takes no apologies for using the same sound bite over and over, but it does it in such a way that it's stuttering, you know, da 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 Yeah, it's, it's and charming it's really that really funny. It, it, you get to the point where... If somebody is owning you, like with a combo, you just kind of sit back and listen to yourself, you know. Yeah. You know, the same thing over and over again. That's great. And uh, the music, um, it was actually released on a disc. I have the disc somewhere. Do you really? Later. I'll let you borrow it. Oh, I got it. For no. that day and age, it was like, oh, this is awesome, because the music is actually still pretty good. I liked it. I, we were just, again, we were just playing it, and, and it's, it is just a very engaging soundtrack. Yeah. And, I mean, it's over-synthesized, and now you look at it, and it's dated. Over-synthesized? You know, is that even a term? <laughs> yeah. No, but there's no such thing. It is, it is still really good. I mean, it's just kind of a... Mm -hmm. Menacing, big soundtrack. Right. Really, I, I think I think I liked. Uh, I'm sure, people are gonna make fun of us, but oh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're nerds. That's what we do. <laughs> um, you said Saber Wolf. Oh yeah, the Saber Wolf's uh, background music. I love that. It's... Yeah, I like Saber Wolf's, yeah. and I liked uh, Spinals as well. Yeah, Spinals is really distinct. Uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about if you played that game. Uh, and if you haven't played the game, you owe it to yourself to play. You know, someone's got to have an N64. Yeah. And I'm even, sure and even if they the don't, game. you get them at like flea market for like ten dollars. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you could find the game somewhere. You know, yeah. check out GameStop or whatever. Or get this an is, emulator. This is one of those things that this is where modern fighting came from, and it could actually learn stuff by revisiting. Right, things. I completely agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. So, in fact, I think I might write a paper on that. It, is that good? Good. We'll post it up if he does. Uh, is this your favorite Killer Instinct? Uh, well, there was only two Killer Instincts that I'm aware of. Well, I mean, if you're, I'm talking, I'm considering the uh, arcade as well. Oh, um, yeah, I definitely like the N64 version more than the arcade because I didn't have to dump quarters into it and I didn't have to stand there for <laughs> hours playing. Yeah, that's a plus. Um, I, that's actually brings me to another point because I can remember when I was playing the game in the arcade and I knew they were going to release it on the N64 and I was super excited <laughs> and then when I got it of course everything's dumbed down a little bit because yeah. it, they just don't have the processing power the memory to do it right. um, but there were actually some give and takes I think there were fully uh, 3D backgrounds yes. which we could interact with a little bit more and even though they were a little bit less sharp um, there was a little bit more interactivity there, right? And they they you know they cut out frames and animation and that sort of thing. All those things they have to do to cut corners to get it to fit in the console. Mm -hmm. But it was really a pretty honest port. I like it. They left out some of the story elements as well. Oh, I didn't even know there was a story, so it doesn't yeah, matter. You don't terribly miss that. I can remember playing, you know, on ends trying to. Beat it with each character. To... Oh, I do that with all the fighting games. Yeah, but this one, I just remember a few of the characters I just could not play. Like, I was not good with Maya. Maya. Maya, yeah. And I was not good with Django. I'm still not good Django? with Django. Django, yeah. Django. Django fed. Django. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, you know, so. You're missing, you're mixing your nerdum there. So, <laughs> it's one of those things that I would play through as Saberwolf. Right. Till close Saber to the Wolf end. Is, Saberwolf is. Beast, man. Yeah, he's, he's got some crazy moves. I would play with as him until the very end and then switch out to another character and just beat my head against you know, a wall until I beat Gorgos or whatever his name is. Yeah, was. no, I remember that guy. Actually, he was a playable character in the N64 version. Uh, you had to throw in a code and it was all a bunch of cheap moves. Yeah, I think I remember that. It's yeah. been long enough ago. Man. Yeah. All right, guys. Check it out. I agree. Check it and out. Tell us what you think. Send us an email or follow us on Facebook. Thanks for your support. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Oh, first shot. Uh, oh, I am the man. Ah. I can't do that until you shut the thing off. It hurts. I need to.
Next week, we take a look at Marvel Knights 2099. And, um, there's a lot of repeating sound bites, which I actually think works really well. I think it's really fun to hear, you yeah. know, the character, oh, 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 you know, like the same. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Oh, that's okay. great. So anyway, uh, I'm getting red now. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Let's get in our time machine and go back. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, okay, okay, Peabody. <laughs> <laughs> Toys operated boy. Oh, anybody a fan of Dresden dolls? I don't know. No? Fun fact, uh, Neil Gaiman actually married, and I can't remember her name, but the singer, pian pianist from Dresden dolls. Just fun fact. Mm, I don't know if that's true. It is, it is true. It is. Okay. I said fun fact, that makes it true. Okay. Fun fact, I'm actually from Pluto. But the fun might be a lie. Okay, we gotta start. <laughs> <laughs> That was a good segment, yeah, though. That too was, much, man. It was too, too, too much. All right.